Hello friends, welcome to this channel. Today we'll talk about such important part of the UX design process as creating user flow diagrams. User flows are often confused with user journeys, so let's try to find out the differences. User flows and user journeys are both about how people use something to get what they want. Basically, how they use products to reach their goals. They are helpful for understanding and planning user experiences. User journeys look at the bigger picture, showing the overall experience the users have across different channels and times. The path from point A to point B in user journey takes longer than in user flow most of the time. And user flow zooms in on specific actions users take step by step through a product. The focus is narrowed to a specific objective. Some appropriate goals to capture in user flows might be purchasing a pair of shoes through a mobile app, creating an event in your calendar, or signing up for a newsletter. These goals can be accomplished in the short term and with a relatively limited set of interactions. And now let's jump into Figma, I will show you how to create user flow based on the calendar up example that I was working on a few months ago. How many houses have you seen where you had to enter through the bathroom and then leave through the bedroom? Hopefully none. This would be the housing equivalent of a digital product built without a user flow. In Figma there is a really nice feature grouped under the name FigGem. So if you create a new FigGem, you can always start with the AI helper that can build a sample user flow for you. So if you ask user flow for a flower delivery app and will present you with a really nice user flow. Maybe it requires some changes to be made, but still it's a pretty nice result that you can tweak to your needs and uh, you can get really nice ideas for that. But in our example we'll be building the user flow ourselves and it will be an event creation for the calendar app. The typical user flow usually consists of four elements. They are circles for entry points, diamonds for decisions or conditional logic, rectangles for actions and arrows to connect all of them together. So let's start with the entry point, we'll call it start. And I will make the entry point this. After that, the first action is to open the app. And let's make all the squares purple little bit wider this after opening the app we go to the create event tab and after opening the event tab the action is to tapping the create event icon when we tapped create new event then the logic comes into play. Let's make all the diamonds green and it will ask is the event for today? Let's connect all of these guys together because they are pretty straightforward now and the interesting things start happening at the logic level. So let's create the next rectangle. So if the event is not for today, we'll select the event date, right? If the event is for today, then the next question will be is this an all day event? and how to deal with all these logic things. So if yes, we'll go here and we paint this arrow 
green as well as it stands for yes we can even add text saying yes make it medium and we can have a text background for that as well and if it's small then this action comes into play and it will be red and it will say no like this pretty easy right this arrow should be gray because it's not conditional logic and after that we'll have another action and the action is select event start date and of course select event end date these two things happen in case that it's not an all-day event let's move it here make it red and if it's an all-day event we'll ask to enter the event details so if it's yes then go here for this we have simple gray arrows and when the events started and dates entered we go to this enter event details box as well good what comes next when the events details were entered when we enter the event details we add attendees or maybe let's add an image first and then add attendees and after we added attendees another logic comes into play and it will be about the privacy so we'll ask is this event a private event let's copy this box paste it here and ask is this a private event if it's a private event then we just save it and it's done if it's not private then we add who can see this event the last action is save event so this one if we say no and this one if the event is private so we color this one green say yes and this we color red and it's for no here should be the gray arrow and that's basically it all we need is to add the last point the end point and we are done let's take a look at our user flow so we start open the app open create event tab then tap create new event is the event for today no then we select the event date if yes another question is this an all day event no then select event start and end dates if yes then we start then we enter event details add an image add attendees then we asked if it's a private event if no we add who can see this event if yes then just save it and that's the end thank you very much for watching this video if you have any questions please write them in a the comment section have a really great day and see you in the next video